Continuing the conversation on election year politics, we turn now to Richard Fowler, host of The Richard Fowler Show and Democratic Specialist for Messaging and Millennial Engagement. He joins me from the nation's capital. Okay, what's your take, Richard, on the uh, Nevada race where Hillary beat uh, Sanders by about five percentage points? Listen, what, what this tells me, Larry, is that this isn't, thanks for having me, uh, as always, this just shows that this election is a lot closer than people thought it would have been this time last year when Hillary Clinton announced. But what it also says that Hillary Clinton is doing, she's, she's going to be the nominee. There's no question about that. I, I think what she's going to have to do now is really solidify her message to young people. Recently, uh, I, I was with some young people up in Albany for the New Leaders Council and having a conversation with them about that same thing, how she talks, how she has a better conversation with young people. And, and the, the part of it is tapping into their emotion, feeling their pain, understanding why they're so concerned about our nation's future. And that's more than just policy positions and policy papers. It's really just tapping into the emotion where Bernie Sanders has been so impeccable at doing. Sanders, uh, if he does not get this nomination, will obviously endorse Hillary. He couldn't endorse any of the Republicans. Will Sanders' people come out? Well, that's going to be an interesting question. I think a lot of them will because they understand the alternative could be a Donald Trump or a Ted Cruz. But it's going to require that the Hillary Clinton campaign really have a conversation with these voters. These are young people. These are folks who feel as though the system and Wall Street has failed our country and has failed them. And so she's going to have to have a real heart-to-heart -heart conversation with these individuals about what's happening at their kitchen table and how, one, that she understands them, Two, she has to connect with them. And three, and most importantly, she has to give them some real meaningful solutions to these problems and not just four more years of the Obama administration. She's not connecting with young women, is she? Uh, well, here's the thing. She didn't connect with young women in, uh, in New Hampshire or in Iowa. Uh, she did a little bit better in Nevada if you're looking at the exit polls. She's probably going to do pretty good in South Carolina. And the reason she's going to do so well in South Carolina has everything to do with the fact, Larry, that there is a big majority African-American population there. And I, over and over again, I think there's been everybody's going to figure out what African-American voters are going to do and what African-American young people are going to do. But this election, I got to tell you, for African-American voters is going to be historic. One, this is the first time in the past almost 12 years that there hasn't been an African-American on the ballot uh, running for president. Number Number two uh, is, is that these voters, they're, they're sort of, they're, the, the African American vote is now fractured, Larry. You have some, you have this Black Lives Matter, these Obama voters, younger voters who are looking for one thing, and you have older African American voters who are looking for another thing. Now, the question for Hillary Clinton and the hard part becomes is can she build the bridge between those two generations to get them to turn out for her? And that's more than just having, you know, huge civil rights surrogates like John Lewis or, 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 or Clyburn come out and support her. It's really, about her getting down, understanding their issues, and tapping in to their aspirations and hopes for what this country can be, and not what it is today. Should she win South Carolina? She probably will. Will she win? I, I haven't endorsed a candidate yet, Larry, but is she, is she's running a good ground game. There's no question that the Hillary Clinton campaign is running an impeccable ground game. They're turning their voters out, and they're turning them out in big numbers. They turned them out really big for her in, in Nevada. They also didn't, they turned them out pretty big for her in Iowa. She won by razor, razor thin, but it, 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 she was behind the polls for a couple points prior to that. Um, Super Tuesday is going to be a big day for her. Why has Bernie Sanders done so well? Here's what Bernie's done really well, uh, is that he's found a way to communicate in very, very, very common language to the American people and, uh, and tap into their hopes, Larry. I mean, look at the system that we are currently living in. We're living in a system where t the top 10 hedge fund managers make more than all the kindergarten teachers in this country combined. Bernie Sanders has tapped into that sort of anxiety and that anger that exists in this country. Him and Donald Trump, um, I would argue, honestly, has tapped into that same type of anger. It, it, you could feel it, right? It's palpable. And they've tapped into it. And because they've tapped into it, they've been able to really make a name for themselves. And he's made a name for his campaign. He's talked about why the system, if you listen to his messaging very carefully, right, the system is rigged. The 1% is what you hear him all say. The 1% is making too much, and the rest of us are struggling too much. That messaging really resonates with young voters. It resonates with a lot of folks to the left. And it resonates with a lot of people who really feel as though the system has failed them. And they think that this president hasn't done enough. Look at the other side. Donald Trump said the other day, if it's Trump versus Clinton, it'll be the largest turnout in history. Would you agree with that? I actually agree with the Donald on that one. I think that is because 
Democrats and progressives and liberals, whatever they're going by today, their definition, they will turn out for Hillary Clinton in record number because they do not want Donald Trump to be the president of the United States. Who should Democrats fear the most on the other side? I actually think uh, the, the biggest fear, I would argue, is uh, Marco Rubio. And, and beyond Marco Rubio, it's who he picks for his running mate. If he is the nominee, which probably looks unlikely right now, and he picks somebody like a John Kasich, right, where Florida and Ohio are both locked up for the Republican Party, that's a very, 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 very dangerous thing for Democrats. It's very dangerous waters. So I think it's going to be critical um, that, you know, that doesn't happen. And I think that it, all the signs look like is that Donald Trump could be their nominee. Uh, and the only way he's not their nominee is if the establishment and those in control of the party try everything to sort of push him out, which I think will be part of the problem that Donald Trump is speaking about. But this is nothing new from the Republican Party. For almost the past five or six years, this party's been having a civil war within itself, right, between the Tea Party and the Republican establishment. Donald Trump has unearthed this civil war and pretty much we're literally fighting the, the Battle of Gettysburg in the Republican Party right now. And the Republican establishment doesn't like Cruz, right? The senators don't like him. Is no. Cruz has not made any friends here in that building behind me there, Larry. He's <laughs> actually made a lot of enemies by bucking the system and bucking the civility of the United States Senate. <laughs> the pundits have been pretty wrong all year. How has Trump done it? The pundits have been wrong. Uh, I could say that I, haven't, I wasn't one of them. This is what Trump did. Right. Trump came out. Trump said what everybody else on the Republican side and the far, far right was feeling. He put he felt he tapped into those emotions. He is literally living a reality television show on the campaign trail each and every day. And that seems to be resonating with voters. And it seems to be resonating with uh, with the other uh, good chunk of the American electorate. Right. And because the, the Republican Party is so fractured, now we're down to about four or five candidates. Remember when the time when Donald Trump announced we were about 15 or 16, he was able to really corner the market. Now, where all the pollsters and where all the pundits are wrong, was like, oh, he's going to drop out, he's going to drop out. And where I disagreed with them on that point is because he has nothing to lose here, Larry. This guy, the, the only thing that's going to happen for Donald Trump, either if he's a nominee or if he's not the nominee, is he's going to win. He's either going to get another reality show, he's going to get some more property, he's going to get some more hotels. This is a win-win situation for Donald Trump. And that's why he's been, so, been able to be such a good candidate for the Republicans. Do I agree with everything he says? Absolutely not. But he's a good candidate for the far-right Republican base. Thanks, Richard. Always great talking with you. It's good, and I wore suspenders just for you today, Larry. <laughs> for more on Richard Fowler's work, you can follow his writings on Twitter at Richard A. Fowler.